Commission. <laughs> the Legal Redress. <laughs> 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 Commission. <laughs> the Legal Redress. The legal redress. This is how we do it. <laughs> you are a fool. You are an idiot. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. As you see, every time this man sings this song. Y'all know what it is. We're going to bring them in just ever so slightly. Y'all can handle that, can't y'all? Let's turn it down just slightly a little bit more because we ain't supposed to be at 14. There we go. We're going to let Ray play in the background. Haven't played him for a while because I've had people telling me, Oh, baby, you down throw up that. Did I do something to piss you off? I'm sorry. No, I didn't mean to do that. But you've been sounding so upset and so stressed out. I just didn't know these people could do that to you, baby. But if there's anything I can do for you, I'm going to pray for you, honey. I'm just going to pray. And I'm going to pray that you get a new attitude. You know, you listen to all these singers. You need to listen to Patti LaBelle and get yourself a new attitude. You talk about being a Christian. You know what Paul says about putting on a new attitude? Yeah, I know he say personality, but you know what he meant, baby. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I'm going through. I got so, so many people creeping into my business, whether it be here in Puerto Rico or there in the States, on the Internet or off the Internet. I've always been a private person. That stems from the neighborhood I grew up in. I remember a young man, he's not young anymore, man is almost 38 years old, but he was 16 at the time, and he told me, he said, because uh, I asked him, a, a bunch of us were together, and I asked him, I said, um, what's that? And he looked at me and he said, mind your own, and you live long, and guys, no youngster talked to me that way and I was in my early 20s and I used to put my chest uh oh just decided to take a little trip there for a minute I apologize but as I was saying I used to put my fist in people's chest especially if they were youngsters to let them know that they didn't talk to me that way and this was a youngster he had some size on him but he already knew that I could hurt him and so when he said that, I looked at him and I laughed. I'm like, this fool just told me to mind my own business. And I told him, I like that. I'm going to take that from you. And I've used that saying in my own little way. Came up with my own little cards called the MYOB Society. Let's, let's let Ray tell it to y'all for a second. Here, tell him, Ray. Now, he got one more thing he going to tell y'all. Listen to this. For a person singing this live, let me tell you. 
no synthesizers, no electronic keyboards. He's playing with a live orchestra. And everything is in pace. There is not one single mistake in this live performance. Just listen. So when you get a chance, download Georgia On My Mind live. And play it in a sound system that you can hear the music. And I think that's part of his problem. He had them little girls on his mind. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let me explain so that some of you can know. And then we're going to get into the news of the day, the information of the day. Here in Puerto Rico, I have done what I've always did. I give everybody the opportunity of proving to me that they're an idiot. Everybody. The music stops, so it's telling me I gotta pick another song. I believe the man's name is Peter Frapton. Well, anyway, it's been done by so many people. Okay, well, you give people an inch and they take football fields, whole countries, you, you find them taking the entire ocean floor bed. Um, I decided after the incident with the car, you know, I put the video up and so many people went out there and did it and there was a need for the bank to step in and put an end to that because they couldn't have you guys doing that. That would, that would really interfere with things. And that's what this video is about, interfering with things, how things are about to change. There's a couple of things we're going to talk about before we get into that. And I promise you, nobody else is talking about this. And if it takes the rest of this afternoon, I will try to load this video up today. I got nine videos waiting to be uploaded to the net. But because of the area I live in, the internet is so slow that I have to direct TV. I have to hook up the direct TV and here you hook up your own direct TV you you don't pay for the company to come and hook it up uh, but you hook up the direct TV and you pay monthly no contract I think that that is really interesting all I want is the internet because I don't watch TV it doesn't do anything for me um, and so I will be connecting that and having access to the internet the before I moved out here I did a little bit of homework and I had someone checking to see if there was internet access and let's just say when they checked they didn't check they just assumed that because someone else had internet access that there was internet access in the area it turns out that the only internet access here is tethering with your cell phone which is monotonously slow um, but that's okay. I like the area I live in. I do like it a lot. But that was the first incident. And then the individual I let borrow something of mine. Actually, I let borrow several things of mine. And I trust the person up to a point. And one of them they damaged another item they damaged both times that they damaged these items and we're talking the total value if we were to put a monetary value on these items over eight hundred dollars one of them is not usable anymore and let's just say the other one is usable but I'm not using it and the person didn't tell me that they had damaged it. One of them was very important to me because I utilized it all the time. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was even something I utilized in creating videos when I'm not at the computer. Um, no, I'm sorry. No, I apologize. No, hey, let me repair that. Or let me replace that. Let me help you with that. I'm sorry I can't afford to. 
and I do apologize. If he had come to me, I would have told him, don't worry about it. On both issues. Because that's the way I am. But he didn't. Well, this past weekend, I was supposed to go to the main city, San Juan. And I called and left several messages letting the individual know that if he was going to be taking that trip, I was going to be taking a trip with him. If it was okay. He told me it was okay, told me it was on its way, told him, hey, I'll be here when you get here. Well, I ended up being stuck in town, and the person was going to be here for most of the weekend, so I decided to, when I got home, to go looking for him. Couldn't find him. So the next morning, I went looking for him, even yelling out his name in the area where he was going to be. It's an open area, so a lot of trees, but echoey. So the person could hear me yelling if they were there. Didn't answer me. So I left a note. Hey, how you doing? This is where I be. I did that and the person never contacted me. So all day Saturday, I wait for the individual to contact me. I stay at home waiting the entire day because if he's going back Saturday, which he's done a couple of times, hey, I want to be there. I took the chance on driving a used automobile. Like I said, everybody's wondering why I'm so not too happy these days. I got a used automobile because when I put, that, when I put out that video on the automobile, <laughs> let's just say the hour style money orders, I would have had to have reworked them to make that work. And I'm still not finished with that issue. That's an issue that I'm still debating on how I'm going to handle that. However, because I don't want a Toyota Camry. Well, anyway, I bought a used automobile, told the guy, hey, let's check it out. So let's go. We're going to do 10 miles, five miles away, five miles back. Let's see how this thing handles. The lifters had a little bit of knocking. I don't mind lifters knocking because, you know, you buy a used car, you're eventually going to have to rebuild the engine anyway. It had 140,000 miles on it. But, you know, little minor stuff. On the outside, it looks perfect. But because the dash is black, he used black electric tape to cover up some of the lighting areas to let you know that the sensors were going off and I told the individual when I bought the automobile from him I said hey just need you to be honest with me exactly what's wrong with this automobile oh nothing it runs fine really okay are you sure yeah I'm sure okay and I when we went to the DMV to transfer it into the name they gave me a problem a passport okay now we're back. Didn't have a passport. Didn't have... What was the other thing I didn't have? A uh, passport was one of them. And I did not have a birth certificate. Don't have a birth certificate. I don't have a passport. So they told me, well, you need a birth certificate or a passport to go with that. Because I gave them California driver's license. Yes, I have a California driver's license that expires this year and I won't be renewing. But I figured I'd use it in that instance so I wouldn't have any problems and they gave me problems. So I told them, I said, from now on, you're going to get the declaration of executorship. It's been validated by a notary and by the Secretary of State. And it has more power than the birth certificate and a passport, which is only issued by a government office which never validates them as a person. People, you must keep in mind one thing. The ID only documents existence of something. You as the person are the identification. Your being in person are the actual identification which is necessary. And nobody can deny you that. So once you bring the notarized document and you're standing there in person, I'm going to insist on my rights. Well, if you insist on your right, you just deserve to get whatever you get that's fine then I deserve it back to my story the audio did not make it make it to the wonderful city of San Juan 
As a matter of fact, I only got, it's a two hour drive. I got about 48 minutes away before I blew a tire because the person who sold it to me took the jack out of the truck. I had to drive it on a rim about three miles and it just so happened it being a Sunday that there was a car repair, not repair, but auto parts store right there at that exit. Now the next exit was going to be about 20 miles. So the fact that it blew the tire right there at that exit, even though I had to back all the way off the arm ramp, was unique because it was, well, you might call it a blessing in disguise. When I got the other jack and changed the tires, that took two hours back home because there was no place to buy this tire. The tire is too big and most of the other locations didn't sell this tire. That's okay. So I said I'll go back home. I'll wait until I get another tire and then I'll take this trip again. The truck's gauge for heating and cooling never went above half, which was okay. But what I didn't know is that they purposely altered that gauge so that it wouldn't go above half. Not only did I overheat, but I overheated so much coming back up these hills that the transmission overheated. So much that the transmission's rear seal broke and the transmission fluid hit the manifold. And what that equates to, let's see, what's the word? Flame on! Yes, that's right. Had a nice little fire, little fire, not a big fire. And it just so happens that it happened when someone was bringing me water to put in a radiator. So we had enough water to, well, didn't even take a lot, but we had enough water to put out that little fire, which could have been a big fire. Because I didn't have anything to put it out with other than that. So what I did, called the guy back, he speaks a little bit of English, and I let him know that he will correct this problem one way or the other. Or I will introduce myself to him. And I told him a man is nothing without his word. And I gave him my word. We had a contract. Well, you bought a used car. There's no lemon law in Puerto Rico. No, but there is the Uniform Commercial Code. And this was a commercial transaction. And I have a witness to the agreement. And I have documents. And I have the documents from the Department of Motor... No, Department of Transportation. It's not even the Department of Motor Vehicles here. It's the Department of Transportation. And so... I'll introduce myself to him. He owns a house and he and his wife's name. So because his wife was there and she was part of the transaction, I'll add her to the suit. What I'm going to do is get their attention and let them know who I am. But they will be correcting this problem. One way or another, this problem will be corrected. Okay. Now, we've taken that time just to let you know why I'm frustrated with people. We have the fact that even while I'm overheating, I asked the guy who's supposed to be going back to San Juan, hey, all I need is for you to bring me some water. I'll park this thing. I'll have somebody else bring it to the house, and I'll go with you. Yeah, well, we got to go. Uh, the guy that I'm with got to get back. He had a previous engagement. Okay. That's fine let's go 30 minutes later still didn't show up they were only 5 minutes away literally 5 minutes away 30 minutes later no show I called someone else after them who was 10 minutes because it was that important to this person that they come and assist me who has been providing a great deal of assistance since I've been here. So that's my frustration, ladies and gentlemen. It's people. No matter where you go, no matter what language they speak, no matter what the color of their skin, no matter what the geography of their casa, homes, or estates, or castles, or whatever it is they want to call that place where they domicile. No matter what it is, people are the same. 
That's okay. That's okay. I'm not going to take it out on you all. I'm going to take it on those people. Now, we were told, do not return bad for bad. You know better than that. Look, I'm not going to keep trying to tell you what you already know, boy. First, I ain't no boy. Second, don't tell me what I already know. Because if I already know it, why do I need you to tell me? Okay. This is so that some of you understand what's going on and what my frustration is. Just that simple. The scooter, the moment I had that accident, I was going to literally give it back to the person who sold it to me. Give it to him. Tell him, don't worry about it. You can have it back. Even though I paid for it. I was going to tell him he could have it. I told somebody I was going to do that, the young man who has been helping me, and he asked me if I would give it to him. Now, he's got a disease known as lupus. And he also has a touch of Tourette syndrome. And I said, yeah, you can have it. I don't have a problem with that. And then I thought about it and I said, no, because if he gets in an accident with his medical condition, which is not bad, but it's enough to where my conscience would bother me. I said, no, can't do that. That song that just played was by Roberta Flack. And I forgot the, I think his last name is Butler. And I love that song. Um, but let's continue. The songs are going to be on and off because the one I'm playing, the drive is not hooked up to the computer. I'm using a different drive. And so the songs are not all on there. And so it saved only part of them. So I'll have to correct that the next time. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, some of you wanted to know, and so this is me telling you that other than what I've just said, you mind your own, you live long. No attitude, no anger, no frustration. No, 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 no. Now I get to be calculative. I get to take out my anger on those to whom it is better directed. Okay got the mortgages that we're working on we have the letters we're putting together and some of you well I need to be a part of that look if you're going to be doing mortgages let me be a part of that and I'm, I said the first 10 so stop asking when I said the first 10 and you saw the videos are no longer up online that means the first 10 because for each of those 10 people we're sending this stuff out to 6 different agencies multiply 6 by 10 that is over 60 different letters that we have to create. Some of you, and I'm glad I allowed extra people because I allowed four extra people, three people have not contacted me again, which is fine because there were four other people that I knew that I had relationships with who I have been helping over the past year who are perfect for this. And I didn't know they needed my help, and so they said, if I had the extra room, and I told them, I'll put you on standby, just in case, because you know how people are. So even after I did the other videos, telling people only the people who are interested should be contacting me. Yep, only the people who are interested. And the ones who are really interested have contacted me, but there was three of you who did not, who wasted my time. But people say, well, you're not frustrated, are you? Ladies and gentlemen, when I got to write out 60 different letters, 60, because each letter has to be different, cannot be the same. When I have to do that, and I have to make telephone calls to these, remember, doing it for 10 people, so that's 60 different telephone calls to these different agencies regarding these different loans. When I have to take out of my day to do stuff like that, oh, you better believe there's going to be some agitation and irritation. Okay, now we can move on. You see, it took us that long to get to the point to where we can move on. What are we going to move on to? Well, we're not going there. That's there. We're going here. This is the Legal Redress Commission. This is the old site. This is at tripod.com. That's why you see this big, huge tripod sign right there. You didn't see it? No, I didn't see it. See, tripod. 
Legalese, L-E-G-A-L-I-E-S. This was the old information as of 12-21-2011. And you can go there and see where we were back in the day. Okay? All law is contract. Unlimited consent. The advocate. Then we have UCC filings. Legal notice and demand. Legal notice and demand. A chargeback and affidavit. Well, how do you fill out a legal, I mean, a UCC1 farm? <sighs> then we have the credit correction. Then we have suits against the. Well, where do you have any of your cases on the internet where we can view? And we actually put that information here. But dealing with idiots. And the idiot that did ask us originally on the Angela Stark show was an idiot. And I don't say that lightly. I say that with all stress. He was an idiot. I'm sorry. <laughs> looks, sounds like I'm upset again, but I'm not. We do A for V, understanding A for V, A for V and samples, using your credit, debt elimination. Now, all of this is old information because we've updated this information on the current site in one form or another, either with documentation, which is what we have done. This is just to let some of you know where we were and where we are. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. How to use UCC, how to become a, let's see, what's that? Let's see what that is, because I don't know what it is. what is really going on your name in all caps we are no longer dealing with the straw man oh how to become a sovereign we don't want to become sovereigns people okay we're not trying to become sovereigns what we are trying to do is what this gentleman did on this site right here now we're not following his example this is America's Republic Party dot org okay method to utilize the method utilized to claim sovereignty don't want to claim sovereignty and this is the video that we were planning on doing so what we're going to do is we're going to cover this okay we're going to cover this information right here but let's stop for a second and explain to you something that nobody's talking about some people have mentioned it but nobody's talking about the the after effects the repercussions the United States Federal Reserve Bank was enacted in 1912. Well, that charter was not renewed. So, at the end of this year, Federal Reserve Charter is gone. Federal Reserve notes, which is backed by the Federal Reserve, are gone. So what currency will they be using at that time? Oh, they're going to be using that Amero. You know, the United States and Canada and Mexico, they have it called an Amero. Ladies and gentlemen, where has the announcements been on the news? Where has the government made the people aware like they did in 1933 with that gold standard thing, with FDR? They had their depression, which lasted for a couple of years where the currency was worthless they're going to devalue the currency and ladies and gentlemen we were expecting them to do it earlier this year and it looks like they are patient why do we say they are patient let's see if we can find it not there really I didn't know I had these open let me close these those uh, consumer financial protection bureau those are the cases that I filed with those people to get their attention because they weren't paying attention so I had to get their attention if there's a cure for this I don't want it don't want it I think there's a cure for it some people say you know what the fidelity.com information you put up there it doesn't exist anymore what, what do we do ladies and gentlemen it's not my place to tell you what you do I'm looking there was a particular site that um, a guy had put up and I cannot find it right now where he literally talked about oh well 
I was explaining to you all about this right here and then we went into the conversation about me explaining to you about the currency and the US government and we did it in our last video the very last video prior to this one I believe it's dated 9-5-2012 where we took you to that site where it showed you the videos with Wesley Clark and how this is a plan and they say they have a short window and they said 10 years go back and listen and read what the site says the video by Wesley Clark was put out in 2003 the short window of 10 years brings us to 2013 what happens in 2013 the end of the US Treasury Department the Federal Reserve Act January I believe it is January 10th 2013 but I do know that it's early January now if that ends then why is it that they have a short window because they were not planning on introducing another method of currency they couldn't it would destroy the entire system as we know it why would it destroy well I don't think it would destroy yes it would the United States dollar is the world reserve currency if you remove that from the system haphazardly what does that do to the economy of the world what does that do to the stock markets which are trading on derivatives and hedge funds stuff that doesn't even exist they're trade they're they're hedging their bets they're betting against something that they quote unquote acquired that's like you being on a basketball team and betting against your team to lose and hoping that your team loses and none of the other players are in on the game they're not in on your so-called scheme to lose and you're sitting on the bench because the coach won't let you in because your skills are not good enough so you're sitting on that bench twiddling your thumbs trying to hope that your team doesn't score any more points and that the other team slaughters you well that's what the banks have been doing they need the system to collapse because they've been hedging their bets and you better believe that they have purchased all the other currencies we were hearing about these governments um, we got the French and a bunch of other governments buying gold right now because everybody thinks gold is going to be the standard again they cannot make gold the standard because the people have no access to gold so gold can never be the standard but I promise you there's going to be a a crisis before there's not a crisis and that is coming and it is imminent I'm not predicting the future I don't know what song this is but let's see it's got my attention this is Monica singing Mira now Monica that's my girl and she's gonna sing to y'all because that's what she does now we're gonna leave Dragon Naturally Speaking open alright <clears throat> So that's me letting you know that nobody's talking. Oh, but Ron Paul says to end the Fed. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Ron, you know Ron Paul. Ron Paul's the only person running in the election who's worth anything. Look, Ron Paul knew that he wasn't going to be elected. If you don't believe me, go back and listen to his speeches. Go back and listen to Alex Jones' interview with Ron Paul. And notice how every single interview Alex Jones has with Ron Paul on his show, he keeps saying the words, and even if you don't win. If he was so much in support of Ron Paul, and if Ron Paul was so much going to be the next president of the United States, why would Alex Jones keep saying, and even if he doesn't win? You don't believe me? Just go back and do that search on uh, Alex Jones with Ron Paul. And he says it all throughout the show. And even when he's building up to something, mentioning Ron Paul, he keeps saying, and even if he doesn't win, okay, he keeps saying, and even if he doesn't win, because there was no intention of letting that idiot get into office. <gasps> you called Ron Paul an idiot? Yes, because Ron Paul's been saying for years that he wanted the Fed to end the Fed, and he knew that their charter was ending in 1913, uh, excuse me, 2013, sorry, that it begun 1912 and was enacted in 1913, and that it ends because it was only for 100 years. 
it ends in 2013. Ron Paul knew this. He's a congressman. He knew this. And I know that at one point in his congressional life, he worked in finance on that so-called hill. So there is no way in the world he was ignorant of the fact that the charter was about to end. And even if he wasn't, even if he had no idea that their charter was about to end, then that's not the idiot you want in office because if he doesn't know something as basic and as simple as that, then you know he's an idiot. Well, no, you can't talk about Ron Paul like that. No, I'm going to sit up here and I'm going to get me a sniper rifle and I'm going to take you out. You don't get to talk about Ron Paul. I'll talk about anybody and everybody who misleads the people. Anyone and everyone who misleads the people. We're supposed to be putting out accurate information. And these idiots are not putting out accurate information. They're lying to people and making people believe this or making people believe that. And all of the junk they're spewing is lies. And that is so irritating to see these people have all of these individuals following them based upon their information. Ladies and gentlemen, don't follow anybody because of what they say, including myself. Don't follow nobody. That's the problem with this world is that we've got too many followers, and I know everybody can't be a leader. But if you're going to get behind somebody, get behind somebody who backs up everything with facts. And I'm not one that backs up everything with facts. I only show you where I'm getting my information from. We've had to go back and retract a lot of things. Why? because where we got the information from was not a valid source like the straw man go ahead and type in straw man and you're not going to pull up anything there is no such thing now if you want to say the straw man means the collective entity oh well sure we got Braswell versus the United States let's do this so that you guys can see sorry you're not supposed to be seeing my malware popping up because we're just letting you know that when you're on the internet you're um computer picks up so many sites that it shouldn't be picking up you know let's do this um i love this song haven't heard it since the 70s when i originally heard it but i love this song uh traveling through the west let's do collective entity Now, for those of you who look at the YouTube videos and you want to leave your comment because your comment is important to you and you feel that you should have the right to leave it, let's let you know that no, you will not be leaving any comments under any of the videos because we are blocking that as a result of the stupidity of certain people. So sorry. And no, you don't just get to leave a comment because I will not respond to you, too many of you. Related articles, PDF, Why Statutory Civil Law is Law for Governments and Not Private Person. Now, this is the Family Guardian. You know what? I'm going to download that. We're going to put that on our site. Oh, yeah, it's going to, my malware is telling me to update. So, I'll update while I open that. Collective Entity Resolution in Relation and relational data um, re-examining the collective entity doctrine I think I have that on my site already large scale collective entity matching anyway collective entity and moral rights the justor.org Collective Entity Rule Freedom Documents. Post about Collective Entity Rule written by. Let's do that. We'll go there too. And this one. Yeah, let's do that. We'll open up all three. Why am I doing this? Well, because you need to know. Um. Let's see. 
Collective Entity Doctrine Definition Resolution Let's do definition Because like he said This is not the whole song of Earth, Wind, and Fire That much I know But we're going to do reasons I know y'all understand reasons No Citizenship in America Freedom documents, documents for sovereigns on how to obtain freedom, not legal advice, just what has worked for others. <gasps> really? Keys to Liberty at WordPress, Keys to Liberty 2 at WordPress.com. So it's an HTML, it's not a, a World Wide Web www site. And. Collective, see, Braswell versus the United States, 1998. This doctrine is known as the collective entity rule and has a lengthy and distinguished pedigree. Okay? Uh, pedigree. Ped pedigree. Anyway, pedigree. Um, I am going to take this information and. I am going to copy and I am going to add it to a Word document. All the reasons why, all the reasons we are alive. Love will never die. Let's see. What am I opening up? Yeah, let's open that document up. There we go. And then we open up a new document. And we close that document. And then we make that document large. And then we... Hurry up, give me my pastables. And we paste all of this information in, and then we're going to cover this information just a little bit so that you all will understand. And then we're going to cover back that other information. See, that's what people need to have. I'm sorry. Sometimes it works like it's supposed to. It says it's opening in protected view. I don't want it in protected view. Okay. American citizen are electing to proceed as a U.S. citizen under the collective entity rule. Let's see. There appears to be a misunderstanding by most people in general as to the difference between a natural biological person and artificial person created by legislature process to gain control over the population in general. This document will explain that difference. John Joseph Smith, John Smith, John Joseph Smith is a natural and thereby biological flesh and blood person, a creation of God. Now, that's what I've been trying to explain to you. They've already said it doesn't matter if it's in all caps or if it's in lowercase caps. Please understand something. Whether the name is in all caps or lowercase caps, when you have three different names, that's an artificial person. Why? Because if you look under any of the corporation rules, it says that a name cannot be consistent of a single letter. And just do your logic. What's a name? A name is not three names combined. A name, those are three different names. John is a name, Joseph is a name, Smith is a name. If you don't believe me, then go and look at how many people are named John. How many people are named Joseph? And how many people have the last name of Smith? Smith and Jones, Smith and Wesson. Do you understand? Two different names, three different names, four different names does not make a person. That becomes an artificial person, a U.S. citizen, a resident, a citizen of the United States, and thereby, out of necessity, a collective entity, because you have the three names, created by the government for the express purpose to gain 
unilateral control over all commercial processes as that process applies to the natural individual person. In basic English grammar, a name spelled in upper and lower case, such as John Joseph Smith, is a substantive given name and indicative to identify the biological flesh and blood natural person. Again, let's do this again so that you understand. Three different names does not identify one person, it identifies three persons. They're collective. When you put them together, it creates a collective entity. It's just that simple. And anything else that they want to do, corporation, you know, you're that entity. Let's go on. Person in general usage, a human being, i.e. natural person, though by statute terms may include labor organization, partnerships, association, corporations, legal representatives, trustees, trustees in bankruptcy, and or receivers. Now again I say stay away from Black's Law Dictionary. If you look at the video we've done previously, it speaks as to Black's Law Dictionary being a joke. If one of them was a joke, if two of them was a joke, then all of them must be a joke. And so we're going to tell you to go to Dean's Law or Bouvier's Legal Dictionary. On the other hand, the name spelled in all capital letters is indicated of an artificial or constructive person. It's an artificial construct is what I refer to it in my documents. Owing its allegiance to its creator and the legislative process. It's not the, it's the all three names. For instance, as I mentioned to you before, Osama was never called Osama Laden. He was referred to as Osama bin Laden, son of Laden. Artificial person, person created and devised by human laws for the purpose of society and government as distinguished from a natural person. Corporate to, corporations are examples of artificial person. Black's Law. You can also find it in those other two dictionaries I mentioned a moment ago. United States versus Anthony. The term resident or citizen of the United States is distinguished from citizen of one of the several states in that the former is a special class of citizen created by Congress. I have never been a resident or citizen of the United States, nor will I ever reside any place. I dwell, I domicile, I live, but I never reside or am a resident or a citizen completely understood right thank you see notes below under comments we'll get to that in a minute we're not going to cover the whole document because we are just repeating stuff that we've already stated before the United States is defined by 28 USC 3002 15 a is a federal corporation it is also the controlling municipal corporation of the many inferior municipal and thereby subsidiary corporations, i.e. instrumentalities of the United States Incorporated, municipal. In narrower, more common sense, it means pertaining to local governmental unit, commonly a city, town, or other governmental unit. In its broader sense, it means pertaining to the public or governmental affairs of a state or nation or of a people. So, the federal corporation United States that pertains to public affairs of a people would be a municipal corporation. The federal government pertains to the protection of the affairs of the sovereign people. No. No. Federal government means corporation. That's exactly what the word federal means. Um, let's do that. Let's do that. Take my word for it. running a little slow because I'm doing so so many things I'm downloading I got dragon naturally speaking running got the music playing in the background got the headset on got three different word documents open I got 25 different um, path open here on the uh, on the Firefox so let's just say it could have been better.
we're going to look up the definition for federal. And while that's doing that, really, collective entity and moral rights problems, liberal democratic thought. It tells me that copy, paste, dot PDF. Just that simple, people. If you're looking for something, a document or something, always add dot PDF. And we do. looking for the legal definition of federal okay federal law definition body of law the highest national level of a federal government consisting of the constitution relating to general government or union of the states based upon and created pursuant to the laws of the Constitution of the United States. Nope. We are we are not getting any definition straightforward on federal. have to go ah this is the Jacksons from 2300 Jackson Street and it's called if you only believe Okay. We do know that federal always refers to government. You always hear them talk about the federal government. Federal, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just do the word federal and see what we come up with. Because I know I did legal definition, and that's not giving me anything. And we're pulling up everything but... First to politics, federal monarchy, a federation of monarchies, of a federal organized monarchy. That's from Wikipedia. U.S. federal government. Then it talks about government definition. This is the freedefinition.com, and it gives us a definition for federal. Let's see if I was right. That's the reason why we do this, so that if I make a statement, I can back it up. And if I can't back it up, I have to apologize and sit up here and retract my statement while doing the video. But I don't think there's going to be a retraction of my statement because federal always denotes government. And the government don't want to be federal anything. Don't want to be a federal citizen federal of a relating to or being a form of government in which a union of states recognizes the sovereignty of a central authority while retaining certain residential powers of government or residual ladies and gentlemen this is the updated version of this word I know that for a fact a union of states yeah okay of our constituting a form of government in which sovereign power is divided between a central authority and a member of constituent political units 
of or relating to a central government of a federation as a district form as distinct from the government of its membered units favorable to or advocating federalization or federalism senators federal lang learnings were well known or federal leanings excuse me relating to or form of a treaty formed by a treaty or compact between constituent political units sorry I'm talking on the phone and my cat wants to jump up here on the sofa with me and I'm not having that okay so we know that federal always refers to a government okay so let's talk about federal citizen again because that was how we got started on this uh, let's see if we're gonna get our PDF wait it says that we can get a PDF right here now many of you may or may not be aware of this song this was when the Jacksons came together I think it was right about 2000 no about 1994 and it was called 2300 Jackson Street so Michael also was with them when they all came together and did this album and when they did the album I went out and bought it because be honest with you there were a couple of songs on the album that were okay and I mean really were okay and I played it so often that I went and bought three tapes because that's when they have cassette tapes CDs weren't really the mainstream at the time but each time I went and bought this tape somebody stole it now, I, I didn't have the mindset to make a copy of the tape but I just went out and bought it three times because every single time somebody stole the tape from me because they liked the music and to this day they keep asking me if I can get a hold of this disc this this tape sorry my cat just got hit in the head with my foot because I asked him to stop and he didn't well she didn't want to stop so the poor little baby I tapped her in the head and she just looked at me like I was stupid like what are you doing get your foot off my head all right this is a PDF and it's gonna take some time it's still uploading and so I'm gonna let it upload and I'll get to it later this is collective entity rule background so let's do some enlargements okay it says why statutory civil law for government and why statutory civil law is law for government and not for private persons I will tell you I don't file civil lawsuits you'll never ever hear me say I'm gonna file a civil lawsuit ever hear me say that I don't do civil suits I do common law suits under the seventh amendment of the Constitution suits at common law where the value is twenty dollars or more are brought under common law and okay we can do this the fifth dimension I didn't know there were only five I thought there were nine dimensions and then there are five dimensions to a pentagon see proof that there is a straw man let's do this now this is the familyguardian.org y'all remember the family guardian a lot of research a lot of information why you are a national state national or constitutional but not a statutory citizen and again I'm a non-citizen national and we're opening up a lot of windows people you're opening up a can of whoop no we're opening up a lot of windows alright there appears to be a general misunderstanding by the people in general as to the difference in, in name spelling 
This affidavit will explain that difference. The basic English grammar, this is what we just pulled up. It was just a different page written in a different... So we went to municipal because that was necessary. And I talked about citizen. All right. Let's go back to our document because I think we should finish where we were. So the federal corporation, United States, remember that's always going to stand for government. Federal always means government. And the United States government is a corporation. Nothing else. A body corporate consisting of the inhabitants uh, of a designated area created by legislator with or without the consent of such inhabitants for governmental purposes. A municipal corporation has a dual charter. The one public, the other private, and exercises corresponding threshold functions and duties. One class consisting of those acts performed by it in the exercise of delegatory power, sovereign power, for the benefit of the people generally, and as the arm of the state in enforcing general laws made in pursuance to the general policy of the state, and the other consisting of acts done in the exercise of powers of municipal corporation for its own benefit, or for the benefit of the citizens alone, or citizen of the municipal corporation, or its immediate locality. A municipal corporation is an artificial person, as shown above, and consists of general inhabitants called citizens. And these artificial persons, citizens, were created by the legislator, not by God, and thereby are foreclosed to acknowledge God and God's law. A corporation can be a citizen itself, and that corporation can have its own citizens. Corporate citizen. So, basically... What we're going to do, I agree with the information that I'm reading here, except for the stuff about the um, straw man. The artificial person, collective entity. Um, the Constitution of the United States, 14th Amendment, section, section 1. All persons born or nationalized in the United States are subject to the jurisdiction thereof. Are citizens of the United States or the state wherein they reside? No state shall make or enforce any laws which shall abridge the privilege and immunity of citizens of the United States. Privileges? We don't have privileges if we are non citizen nationals. We have entitlements. Nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, and property without due process of law, nor deny any person within its jurisdiction equal protection of law. A citizen of the United States is a constructive citizen, or a construct, artificial construct, limited to a corporate status, created by the corporation, entitled as a United States as the United States and thereby is acting as an agent for the purposes of collecting revenue, said citizen can exercise only privileges and immunities as provided within the limitation, limited parameters of the 14th Amendment. A natural person, however, is born with unalienable rights, which are secured by the Constitution. That's right, it's called secured rights, not just rights. You don't want to bring up your human rights, you want to bring up your or constitutional rights, you want to bring up your secured rights. And constructive person restricted to the corporate status could only receive corporate income. Collective entity rule. In Braswell versus the U.S., and guess what, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't get this information, Braswell versus the U.S., from reading sites like this. I actually found out the information on the collective entity doctrine and decided to put that in Google. And Braswell versus the United States is what came up. Braswell was a case where there was a corporation, they were, this was talking about the person, and they were ordered to produce certain information, but the individuals had no longer worked for the company. And so when they were being asked to produce this information, the judges were trying to determine whether or not they were still part of the corporation even though they were no longer employed. So the courts employed what was called at that time the corporate entity doctrine. Okay? An add-on entity, so to speak, and thereby collective, attaching the natural person much as a leech since the status of U.S. citizen can be created by naturalization 
Let's see what naturalization is and determine if a U.S. citizen is, in fact, the inferior and thereby constructive entity, collective entity, of the perceived collective entity, which of necessity requires a biological element to complete the ungodly mix of the scheme. Naturalization, the process by which a person acquires nationality after birth and becomes entitled to the privilege of U.S. citizenship. In the United States, collective naturalization occurs when designated groups are made citizens by treaties, as the Louisiana Purchase, or by a law of Congress as an annexation of Texas and Hawaii. Huh, Black's Law Dictionary actually says that, huh? Person, scope and delineation of terms necessity for determining to whom the 14th Amendment of the Constitution affords protection since this amendment expressly applies to persons. Let's review the definition of artificial person. Persons created and devised by human law for the purpose of society and government as distinguished from natural persons. Corporations are examples of artificial persons. The 14th Amendment applies to persons, and persons in a legal parlance means an artificial person in distinction from a natural person. Collective naturalization occurs when designated groups, inhabitants, are made, created citizens by law of Congress. These artificial persons were created and devised by Constructive human laws, 14th Amendment, United States citizen, for the purpose of revenue of the national person in the venue of the collective society and subject exclusive government control to exclusive government control and evidencing their names crafted by the, and we say names, look at that. Now, somehow they understand that it's a names and not a singular name. These designated political groups are made or created corporate citizens, employees, and, as a matter of law, distinguish from natural person. Natural person whose named, whose name is spelled singular, was born with unalienable rights and is not, as a matter of fact, a corporate U.S. citizen, whereas an artificial person, a corporate citizen of the United States, is displayed of its name in all capital letters, natural person cannot be reduced to the condition of an artificial person. So give me one second. The collective entity rule is, note the above related to the collective entity rule is prime material to confront any court seeking to acquire personum jurisdiction over the natural person while conducting the nature of the proceedings under said collective entity rule. That's why we rebut it look at all of our documents let's see if we can pull up a document oh we were right there let's see Sonny can you pull up a document that talks about the collective entity rule I think we can mama let's see presentment to the off from the office of the estate um no I can't we gotta do this one Oh, no more music. Hold on. This is Tony. Y'all remember Tony? No, as a matter of fact, we're going to skip Tony. We're going to skip Tony. And we're going to go... This, I believe, is. Don't seem like Johnny Mathis, but they say it's Johnny Mathis. It's Johnny. Here is Johnny. Johnny, why does it have to be a mystery?
Wait, 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 wait. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do this document right here. But just to let you know, on the website, the hour style treasury money orders are gone. Just like Johnny Mathis is saying, gone. They're not there anymore, and we will not be putting them up on the Internet anymore. We'll be removing them from the website completely. Not that they are wrong. Sorry, give me one second. I have to say something to my cat. Sorry, the cat is um, messing with the power cord for my phone. And I have a shoe here. No, don't throw the shoe at the cat. Well, the shoe gets the cat's attention to where the cat understands. Okay, and the cat understands now because I can't get up because I'm doing a video. Did you hit the cat? No, I didn't hit the cat, but I got the cat's attention. You understand what I'm saying? The cat does. Okay, let's see. Oh, there we go. Something was wrong, 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 wrong. All right. Now, notice the collective entity doctrine that we... Well, no, we won't. that's not the part. We're going to talk about this right here. Okay. Let's bring it. Cease and desist order presented under reserved rights with the discharge of claims presented by Brett, son of Isaac, agent. He is not a corporation. He is a living soul and shrouded with the breath of life with Jehovah the living God as his creator and soul ruler. He is not the collective entity, a collective entity or fictitious character of any sort or any kind has never consented to being nor shall ever be such a fiction he is the grantor beneficiary in relation to this matter and does not consent to servitude of any nature presenter hereby dissolves and collapses any and all trusts associated with his person name being property and the fiduciaries are commanded to do whatever is necessary to carry out the wishes of the presenter and they are outlined in this document okay that's what we do in reference to the collective entity rule alright now point of understanding this is let's see what they say the court asks uh, the question John should ask oh point of understanding when the court asks John a question John should is this argument or arraignment being conducted under the collective entity rule follow me to attempt to anticipate what the judge will or will not say at this point is anyone's guess I would suppose he or she will be in a state of rapid heartbeat they'll say well what do you mean by that uh, I don't understand what you're what you're saying oh the collective entity rule as brought out in Braswell versus the United States and that's a 1988 case of which you should be familiar with because it is a well-known doctrine in law see at the first opportunity John needs to present his certificate of origin i.e. evidence of live birth reproduced on security paper by the state of his nativity as a birth certificate and a note for the record I say declaration of executorship there's no reason for you to produce a certificate of live birth but the fact that you are alive, a declaration stating that you are alive. Is it not true the party evidence on the face of the charges of this proceeding is not in fact a party evidence on a certificate of origin? Again, the judge may dismiss or try to run a bluff if you aren't seen as knowledgeable and fearless. At this point, should the judge balk, simply ask, what is required to satisfy the outstanding dollar amount regarding the charges against the collective trust or the constructive trust says to K now I get what they're saying I will hold you in contempt you will not bring that into my courtroom well first of all may I strongly object 
to your statement as to this being your courtroom. You are not the owner of this courtroom, nor are you in fact in control of this courtroom. You are an observer only under law. Just that simple. And as far as contempt, I have made no attempt to offend the court, and nor should any of my statements ever be construed as offensive to anyone. And I would hold you to the same standards that nothing you say to me shall be offensive or intended to cause harm. So please desist from making any more threats, as it is not appreciated. If you say another word, um, I object to the fact that you're telling me that I don't have the power or the right to speak, when that is one of the most essential rights of any sentient being. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we're saying. You don't have to use these exact words. You just have to know how to counter his stupidity. He wants to make sure you understand that you have no power. You need to make sure that he understands that you do have power. As a sentient, self-aware, conscious human, you do have power. Okay, the judge should present a bill in the form of or the nature of a bond accept the bill and write across the face of the bill pay to the <laughs> United States Treasury and include the form 1040 V which you should have on your person already filled out with the exception of the dollar amount on the bill presented by the judge return the bill and the form 1040 V to the judge through the bailiff and ask the judge does this court have any further business with the constructive trust that also requires closure of the zero day account give the judge time to respond and declare if there is no further business I will presume to honorably take my leave then turn and leave the court keep in mind under the constructive entity rule should John Joseph Smith grant personum jurisdiction while ignorant of the comprehensive legislative scheme to become a representative or agent for the constructive trust then John Smith would be foreclosed to assert his natural and thereby unenable rights in such a manner as acting as in the nature of a natural man he is in fact John Smith the American citizen is held to be knowingly contracted to the agent representative master of the public vessel a constructive entity noted to perceive in the nature of a US citizen whereas said John Smith is presumed to have knowingly waived his ability to assert his inalienable rights without prejudice to himself and accept the charges brought in the name of John the constructive trust that's why I say I will stand as surety for no one let's pull that document up again no, I think that I've mentioned that several times is how I will never stand as surety for any person and or thing. I actually include that. Let's do that. Let's bring this up. Every presentment presented by the presenter is always to be on and for the record, i.e. public record. Your acceptance and or refusal to respond specifically to any and all presentments by the presenter is your informed consent to hold your body and properties as surety for all debts and burdens in relation to this matter. This would apply to both the defendant and the trustees known as magistrates, judges of the Federal District Court. Then it says trial judges to inform the litigant of the proper procedure. The court claims that no trust exists and that it does not have fiduciary responsibilities in relation to the trust and or trust. The court claims that it does not have the trustee responsibility because none of the following have been repealed and are removed from law. As a matter of fact, the presenter has never accepted any... Uh-oh, we skipped all the way down to the bottom. How did I do that? ...of the following, nor has ever willfully consented to enter or entered knowingly into any contract with full disclosure in reference to any of the following 
it has become necessary to revoke any and all powers of attorney as well as contracts in relation to the following note that this has no bearing on the original trust agreement with the sovereign almighty god jehovah and the presenter though his found or excuse me through his founding father the original creation known as man on the planet called earth and we list all of these let's go down to the next section where I get wordy if these so called trusts do not exist to impact the presenter in any way let the court rebut the presumption by a preponderance of evidence to the contrary and the presenter shall not and will not bring forth the matter ever again the presenter is none of the following nor has ever purported to be nor has he ever consented to be nor will he ever be any of the following okay then he goes on to say and by the power vested in me the presenter I hereby declare that each of the aforementioned trusts to be permanently void dissolved and collapsed and each of the aforementioned trusts are without force henceforth heretofore and forever in relation to the presenter his name his property his person his body his likeness his creation his inventions his ideas his writings his words his works his knowledge his life his being his DNA his body chemistry in any and every and all things associated in pertaining to and relation to his property his person his being as established by the original trust on or about 4026 BCE he retains and maintains any and all real property personal property and ecclesiastical property associated with his person body life without exception he stakes his claim on his property person intellect being life on all of the aforementioned and commands anyone who asserts anything to the contrary to rebut him within five business days of the filing of this presentment correspondence or forever be barred from such a claim assertion and or rebuttal and as a direct descendant of the original man and inheritor the presenter asserts his right to exist and engage in any and all levels of existence including private personal as well as public arenas without hindrance restrictions limitations and without interference this would also include the following in reference to the corporate law as so deemed to be effective because of the Sesake v trust in reference to the maritime and trust law in reference to tomatic and roman civil and canon ecclesiastical law which includes the trust of baptism you are hereby noticed and warned that the presenter is a competent breathing self-aware sentient mature intellectual peaceful non-combative non-aggressive inheritor of the planet earth a living man capable of managing maintaining and tending to his own affairs without supervision hindrance interference and belligerence and it is under the canons of your laws as a fiduciary you are to cease and desist with any interference and or intervening with or in the public personal as well as private affairs of the presenter immediately see the following the presenter does not possess a birth certificate as most would retain none were created in his name he is not so named on any certificate of live birth the presenter created his own name call sign verbal designation he retains maintains all rights of his to his creation yes make sure it says that it has been adjudicated by a judicial officer who he the presenter is or should we say who I am afraid the phrase I am is not a title it does not reference a title it is just a matter of fact of the present there is no corporate title other than that created by the presenter because he retains all rights to his creation from the onset a copy of the judicial order for change of name has already been placed in the file as a matter of public record declaration of executorship grants his assertion of rights has been notarized by an officer of the court acknowledged and accepted by the state of New Mexico's county of Socorro New Mexico and has 
been made a matter of public record for more than seven months without rebuttal. The existence and establishment of the presenter being a live person has always been a matter of public record, and this body has the fiduciary responsibility to collapse and dissolve and foreclose on the trust aforementioned and to liquidate and surrender any and all profits and benefits to the presenter immediately without necessary delay within four business days of receipt of this presentment in the form of a letters of letters of credit now has that happened no do I want it to happen I don't care as long as they understand that I've rebutted every single presumption they could possibly come with because that's what I do I put together documents okay all right now we closed that we said we were going to cover something else but we got into this it was the other document of the America but we don't want to take up all of your time people because this video is already going into overtime so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back here and we're gonna cover this now the UCC financial statement this is what they say they've done this is America's Republic Party dot org forward slash page 10 dot PHP okay am I advocating this website no I'm just letting you know where you might be able to find information okay it gives you affidavit templates stop foreclosures what's happening now with Danny okay we'll pull up this uh, stop foreclosure information um, there is a site uh, you know what there is something I do need to tell you all about so give me a second I'm gonna have to pause you sorry ladies and gentlemen what I was looking for was a website that I told them that I would make mention to you guys of what they emailed me but I received since August 1st and this is September 10th 1,000 emails now I don't know about any of you um, oh, I'm sorry responded to a thousand emails not received gotta make that correction I don't know about many of you but I hate email I hate doing the email thing I think it is redundant how ever a young lady named Betty just emailed me to thank me and she did that this morning she said thank you so very much that information about the insurance I found out that they paid off my insurance a year and a half ago and they're sending me a settlement statement really imagine that I wonder if everybody else called and asked about the insurance the mortgage insurance but oh well I mean you could only shout it on the rooftops for so long and in the broadways to where nobody eventually hears you so I I've lost my voice so I can't shout it anymore that's Skype um, what are we going to be doing the website the legal redress commission official site the commerce site doing what no single company would ever do that's right we're advocating for the public we're not just regular public advocates we're helping to correct debts and this is what it says here you navigate oh this is not this is not the look of the new site so let's make that clear this is temporary so that you'll know that the site is on its way there is no reversal it's already paid for several years in advance so basically the redress commission is doing what other companies has well see now it's operating thank you for visiting our official site for the legal redress commission and the redressright.org will no longer as of next week have the title legal redress commission the legal redress commission will be its own separate entity and we will come up with a name for redressright.org okay ladies and gentlemen gentlemen and ladies ladies and gents but with the legal redress commission computers working a little sluggish you know because we're doing so so many things no other company has attempted to do what we're doing and we're gonna wait for it to catch up to me as a public advocacy group 
it is our mandate to help to correct debts. You're often you have often heard it said that in nineteen thirty three the United States went bankrupt. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is true, but it wasn't as a result of HJR one ninety two. HJR one ninety two is not the proof that the corporation went bankrupt. The actual proof is the Economic Relief Act of nineteen thirty three as well as the Bankruptcy Act of nineteen no eighteen seventy seven no eighteen sixty four sorry I'm doing the Braswell the Butler versus Thompson case of eighteen seventy seven where the Supreme Court mentioned that every dollar is equal in its trading value but then we have the Trading with the Enemies Act of eighteen nope Trading with the Enemies Act of October 6, 1917. So many laws to remember, but you don't have to remember the dates. You just have to remember the names. The Economic Relief Act of 1933, the October 6, 1917 Act, and the Bank Act of 1864. That's all you have to remember. You don't have to remember the details. Okay, those are the laws that allow this. So this is just me letting you know that the redressright.com site is up. It's under construction, so this is not the way the site's going to be looking. I just wanted to put up something simple to let the people know who visited it, since we're now going to be mentioning it on our videos, that the site is up. No advertisement for the site, just letting you know that that is another avenue for which you can achieve some access. The fact that there will be charges on that site, let you know quite literally why there is differences in the two okay so we will not be advertising for the site here because we don't charge you for anything on this site what about the mortgages you're charging for that no the mortgages are completely separate you see I am doing that personally not as a service for the redressright.org but I am personally helping 10 people all right we're going to let this be the end of this video we want to thank you for taking the time to spend the time but we're definitely going to ask the two websites that we did show on this site showing about the citizen, the national and all of that that you go over that information and the forms might prove helpful especially the forms from the Family Guardian I know that the Family Guardian hasn't really updated their site lately and I'm a little bit concerned about that because this is 2012 and the last update I've seen was 2009 three years is a long time all right want to thank you all very 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 much and when I ask that you have a very good day and we will speak with the rest of you later good night good day redressright.org redressright.com redressright at youtube forward slash user forward slash redressright and redress.right on skype and we are located on google at gmail.com redress ucc have a very good day everyone good bye Legal